Welcome back to the lab, folks. For reasons of silliness on my part, this video will be done via voiceover. Now, sometimes, especially after mailbag videos, I get questions like, what do you do with all the stuff you get from AliExpress? So today I'm going to show you. We're going to do three little projects for the lab today. And with the exception of a multimeter, some hand tools and some reclaimed batteries, everything will be something I got recently from AliExpress. In this first little project, what I'm going to do is use this Fernisi HRM10 internal resistance meter to help me build up this simple power bank using these reclaimed batteries. They've all been tested for amp hour capacity and about three weeks ago were charged up to 4.2 volts. Now I want to ensure that they're all pretty much the same voltage and are close in internal resistance before I install them in the bank. Okay, let's get the meter turned on and we'll put it into sorting mode. I've already set it up uh, such that it will test the voltages between 4 volts and 4.1 volts and that the internal resistance is going to be between 160 milliohms and 180 milliohms. Uh, this holder here adds almost exactly 100 milliohms so we're actually testing the batteries for between 60 milliohms and 80 milliohms. That's why I've set things up for 160 and 180. Let's get things zoomed in here so you can have a better look. We'll speed through this, but uh, look for the pass or fail counts to increase. Let's get started. Looking good so far. All right, it seems all nine passed but there were a couple on the high side. So I want to retest those and I'll choose the one that comes out the lowest. It looks like the first one is my choice. These power bank cases are tough to get apart. <laughs> you need some sturdy spudgers and a lot of patience. So I'll speed up through this too. Now, in loading these cells in, it is critically important to get them all in the right way around. Getting one in backwards will result in rapid grief. So I'm going to make sure they all lay down in the same way. You also want to make sure that the cells you have have the flat positive terminal. Not like this one here that has the little pip on it, otherwise they're not going to fit. Okay, let's get loading. Now it's time to test. Perfect. At 96%. Nice. Let's get it all back together. The case snaps back together a lot easier than it came apart. It just takes a few good squeezes. Now I have two of these. I'll probably continue to use one down here in the lab and the other one I'm going to use for uses on the go, mobile. Okay, this package just arrived this morning and what is in it is needed for the next little project. So let's get into that. Here they are. <clears throat> These are right angle IEC C13 connectors. Okay, they feel solid and well made. Now, the reason I got these is to reduce the clearance needed behind some equipment on the shelf and to be able to position things a little bit better on the bench too. You'll see that later. You can see the advantage over a standard C13. They project less than half as much once the strain relief is taken into consideration. So we're going to use these to make up a couple of power ports. You can see here how I dealt with this in the past, cutting off the strain relief and taping the cord back less than ideal. These new connectors would be much better. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to get them ready by removing their covers. And removing the cable clamps. Oh, but before we go on, let's have a quick look at this thing.
It's a solar spool holder. I got to go with my dual iron stand you might have seen in the last mailbag video. I'll leave a link to that up in the, the top there. And the ferro lead works smoothly. It's nice and sturdy and it's heavy enough to stay put when you're using it. Yeah, what more could you ask for? Okay, back to these power cords. I'm just going to chop off the old connectors, strip back the conductors and attach the new connectors. This is turning out to be a bit harder than I expected. The shoulders on the contacts where the screws are is very narrow and it's hard to get the wires to stay clamped in between the screw and the contact. Okay, here we stuff the contacts in place. Lots of barrier between them, nice. Then tighten down the cable clamp. Okay, now let's wring it out to make sure I did it right. Apply to neutral. Apply to ground. Neutral to ground. Okay, now on to the other one. And considering the difficulties I had with that last one, I decided to solder the wire to the contact on this one. That went way quicker, with less trouble. I'll redo the other one this way as well. Always be sure to test anything like this to avoid nasty and potentially dangerous surprises. Okay, all's good. After recording this video, I soldered the first one and I potted both of them with hot milk glue. For our next mini project, we're going to need the East Tester ET4410 and this will also be a nice demonstration as the advantage of these right angle connectors. Nice tight fit. Yeah, now you can see how I can just stand this up on the rear projections. Perfect. Okay, this project has to do with this component fixture I got for the ET4410. This just attaches onto the BNC Kelvin connections on the front here and it allows you to directly attach leaded components without the need to drag out a big set of Kelvin cables. You just simply push the leads of the component into these slots. However, every time you change fixture or cables, you have to recalibrate the meter. This involves both a short calibration and an open calibration. The open calibration is easy, but for the short, you need a very low resistance shorting link. So that's what this piece of copper plate is for. I'm going to apply my in mechanical skills to the task, but uh, we'll see what happens. What I'll do is I'll cut a U in it so it can fit over the divider in the middle. Then I'll trim it down, put a bevel on the bottom edge to make for easy insertion. Sounds simple, right? Okay, let me go do that and I'll be right back. Here it is. I'll just pop it into place to see if it fits. Oh, it does. It fits beautifully too, very nice. Okay, let's run the calibration. This takes a bit of time, so I'll just speed through. All done. Let's test this 680 UF capacitor. It's spec to be within plus or minus 20% just slide it in between the contacts. We're at 100 Hertz here to test for capacitance. 593 UF. That's about 13% low, so it's within spec. Okay, let's set up to test the ESR. And we'll bring up the frequency as high as we can go. 26 milliohms. Now, notice how the capacitance reads better at low frequencies and the ESR reads better at high frequencies. This is exactly as expected. The reason is at lower frequencies, the ESR has little effect on the capacitance measurement as the reactance dominates. But at high frequencies, the reactance approaches zero and the ESR could be clearly measured. 
now I can get some more convenient use out of my LCR meter bonus. So that's it, folks. These are just some of the small but very handy projects that I use my AliExpress purchases for. I hope you got something out of this video. And if you'd like to see more of these mini projects in the future, let me know in the comments. Drop a like, and if you're not already, subscribe for more. See you in the next video, where we'll continue on with the Fernese DPOS 350P scope, which, by the way, was purchased off AliExpress. <laughs>